In the era of globalization, we have enormous examples of people bringing change in our society and communities just by using social networking at the right time for the right thing. While our generation mainly uses technology as a platform for criticism or appreciation over Facebook or Instagram, there are still many people working towards the actual cause, dealing with real life issues and making a difference on their level. In 2009, Teresa Lynn Matthews and her husband Tony Matthews, who previously used to live in Mornington Peninsula, made a wise choice considering their love for nature and wildlife. After planning to semi-retire, now they were just looking for a home that's tranquil and comforting for the two. The couple relocated to a beautiful part at Golden Beach in Gippsland, Victoria, after Tony was considered completely disabled to work again due to an unfortunate accident at work in 2000. They did find their perfect home, but things didn't go as per their plan for too long. 26 Haven Way, Golden Beach, Victoria 3851 is the Matthews' new place now, and their home seemed like any other standard adorable place to spend a lifetime. Proximity to the beach and the abundance of native flora and fauna added with 90 Mile Beach Marine National Park make their surroundings a peaceful living area far from the city hustle bustle. Exactly what they were looking for. However, one sudden visit was about to change their lives forever. Though the new place was perfect, allow us to warn you about Gippsland. The area has abundant wild animals and lacks the local wildlife rehabilitator or animal rehabilitation facility. Though there are a few centers and caretakers, most people here show less interest in saving these animals as they are everywhere. The cases of kangaroos and koalas getting hit by cars have become a daily scenario in the area for many years. In Gippsland, wildlife is usually treated as strays. But Teresa and Tony are undoubtedly one of a kind and their moment was about to knock on their doors. The Australian tourism industry isn't all about views and beaches. It's majorly based on their wildlife. The uniqueness of Australia's wildlife lies in that more than 90% of animals here are natives and are rarely found in other corners of the world. This makes the country one of the biggest tourist attractions for animal lovers. Many Australian farmers have a different understanding of these animals, as most of the wildlife live on grass or tree leaves and are claimed to be a massive threat to their livestock. Kangaroos die of human-made fences, and koalas starve as the trees they used to get their food from are being cut. And massive destruction is caused by road accidents and pet dogs killing them. Wildlife conservation and animal rehabilitation are a must. On one fine day in 2010, the couple's life changed when an unfamiliar person made a surprise visit to their place. Teresa recalls noticing this guy approaching their garden fence. A chap pulled up at the front fence and said, Do you look after wildlife? I said, Why? The man asked them a question and Matthews didn't know what to say. And why was he even asking them such a weird question? They had never worked as rescuers before. But the guy didn't seem to be playing a prank on them either. So the couple just replied to the stranger with a questioning gesture. But they needed to be quick as the person seemed to be in a rush. And what was done next started a whole different chapter in the couple's life story. Though Tony and Teresa had no idea what the guy was talking about yet, they were curious as his question indicated that some wild animal was in need. And that's why the guy was asking for their help. The old couple was aware of their safety, but they couldn't resist knowing what it was actually about. And hence Teresa asked him the most obvious question. Why? And this guy's answer put the couple in a dicey situation. He said, I've got a kangaroo in the car. The couple had never taken care of a kangaroo before, and they had no idea about caring for a kangaroo. But they knew that the guy might just abandon the poor animal and wanted to save the life of the one lying in the car. So they chose to do what anyone would do to save the kangaroo. 
They quickly decided to take the animal and then find the nearest animal rescuer who would have enough knowledge to help the Roo in the car. The more shocking thing was yet to be revealed. When Tony looked at the injured Roo, he realized it was a baby kangaroo, an unfurred eastern gray orphan joey. Now, before you think, why are we emphasizing so much on the kangaroo being a kid? It's because joeys are the most difficult animals to hand raise for a very genuine reason. Roos are born when they weigh less than a gram and crawl to their mother's pouches and stay there for months until they're mature enough for the outside environment. This was more than expected responsibility on Matthew's shoulders now. As soon as the stranger handed over the little Roo to Tony, who was gently holding the baby, the guy, without any explanation about what happened to the mother kangaroo or where he found the joey, drove away. Teresa and Tony, on the other side, were left confused with so many questions unanswered, yet knowing that right now their priority was to save the baby they had just taken responsibility for. The couple knew they had to be quick in finding a suitable kangaroo care center, but it wasn't as easy as it seemed. No doubt kangaroos get stressed very easily when away from their mothers, and for the same reason very few caretakers adopt them for the fear of losing them. A joey can stay alive for several days in her mother's pouch even if she dies. Hence, it is always a must check on a dead kangaroo to be sure if there's a joey and help aid him immediately with intense tenderness and keeping it warm. Based on their knowledge, Teresa took the joey in and tried to keep him warm. She knew he needed to be fostered, but she had no clue which milk would suit the young kangaroo. Meanwhile, Tony tried to look for a specialized caretaker nearby. As soon as Teresa warmed the tiny roo and wrapped him in a pouch-like blanket, she started calling around the city to give him a sheltered home with a registered caretaker. Unlimited calls were made, but she received no response. She was sure there would be enough caretakers available, just like in her last city, where the baby would be safe. For the time being, Teresa knew she had to take charge, and what to feed a kangaroo was the question. So she started searching on the internet about what type of milk or teats she would need to feed the baby, and finally sent Tony out with a list of things they'd require. One day passed without any callbacks, but the second day, when Teresa received a call, she was expecting that now the baby Rue they saved would be getting a suitable place where he'll feel comfortable with others just like him. The call ended disappointing them. The couple had no thoughts about this situation in front of them, but they were sure, not ready to let go so quickly. The more helpless the creature, the more it is entitled to protection by man from the cruelty of man. This saying of Mahatma Gandhi explains all that possibly went through the minds of the Matthews that day, even after the disappointing call. The person called and informed the couple that there were very few specialists in the town, and all were fully occupied. Furthermore, Teresa said, we realized that there was no one here for these joeys, and they were being euthanized, not because there was anything wrong with them, but because there was nowhere to go. Teresa was disheartened by what she had just heard on the call, but she knew the little boy was healthy, and looking into his eyes, she just couldn't let him go. Teresa has loved animals throughout her life, and has also checked the pouches of deceased kangaroos for their joeys due to her knowledge about them. But she didn't have all the information about wild animal rescue volunteer. She has been caring for injured and orphaned birds from the time she moved to her new place, and that was all the rescues she had made so far. However, this new arrival a day before, and no hopes for the little guy other than the Matthews place, made it necessary for Teresa to learn more about these animals so that she could help get the joey proper nutrition. She sure had bigger plans, but all she needed was a ray of help. Teresa works part-time as a personal care attendant, as she also used to stay with Tony due to his health concerns couple lives on Teresa's income and Tony's disability pension. 
The situations looked against them, but the Matthews were determined and didn't keep high expectations as they didn't do what every animal lover would have done. Instead, they almost took things into their own hands as much as possible. Teresa and Tony decided to name the little Joey Bobby. They started fostering him, but had much more going on in their minds now as they were aware of the poor condition of their area's wildlife. Teresa was now willing to learn everything that could be proved beneficial for wildlife rescuing and the working of rehabilitation shelters. How does it all work, and how's it managed? To make a long story short for you, she wanted to be a pro in this field. Any animal lover would rescue the Joey just like Tony and Teresa did. Still, they had a greater vision to fulfill. And that's where Teresa's improved familiarity with the whole wildlife topic was now about to help them in real time. As she got help from a kind woman who informed her of all the necessities. She was now aware of wildlife rescuing and kangaroo care and was ready to be a caretaker. Teresa recalls, he was our first kangaroo and his name was Bobby. And later, more were welcomed. Teresa spoke of her feelings behind the couple's big step. Because of our love for kangaroos, we just opened up our home to them, and this rescue got bigger and bigger. They turned their standard home into Our Haven Wildlife Shelter, Inc., a non-profit organization. It all started when they decided not to give up on Bobby, and along with that, they made it their sole purpose to foster as many lives as possible. The couple stuck next to each other closely, as they were the only ones bearing all the expenses from their own pockets to take care of any new Joey welcomed in their wildlife shelter. Teresa explains her only motive. Financially, the main thing at the moment is making sure we're keeping them alive. And they traveled more than 10,000 kilometers and rescued more than 169 kangaroos in 2015. And the numbers are increasing yearly, which means an average of 14 joeys in their home at any time. Just think about it, if taking care of one joey is an all-day job, then how much care would 14 of those need? And it was all being regulated by Teresa and Tony. To any suffering wild animal, help was provided. Yes, they don't discriminate. They know the value of each existing life, and they rescue any animal they see needing help. Unlike South Australian wildlife, where most red kangaroos are found, Teresa informs, We mainly take on eastern grey kangaroos. They're the only ones down here. And also, swamp wallabies. It costs $400 for 20 kilograms, so it's no wonder the joeys absolutely gobbled it down. We feed them four times a day, but the little ones get fed five to six times a day, said Tony, who describes it as golden milk. Besides all that the couple's been up to, the most challenging part is yet to be revealed. And trust us on this, financial issues come later for them. The Matthews were doing a great job when they gave up their regular lives and started living a better one with these joeys. This was not planned. The wildlife found us. We live on a standard house block. Joeys are fed specialist milk till they're 18 months of age. Because our block is so small, we have to buy hard feeds, e.g. scarf and dry grasses for them. All medications and pathology are paid for by us. It's hard to say goodbye, and I always cry all the way home. But you know, it's about them, not us. We've done our job, so we've got to let them go. Once the joeys are mature enough, they're left back in the wild which is very hard for the Matthews to say goodbye to, and the fact that it'll be more difficult for the Roos. So far, I've had a high success rate. We have not had a holiday since we started this venture, which has given us a purpose. We don't mind going without, as we love and care about our wildlife and believe they're worth it, mentioned Teresa on her website. So how will they manage? Because so far, their actions have made it clear to us that they won't let any Joey be euthanized. Teresa once said, A lot of people think we get paid to do this, and we don't. But if I don't do it, then who will? I stress about how I'm going to keep it up. If these animals double, then I don't know how we're going to afford it. People have been showing interest in the Matthews cause, and are volunteering for the Little Joeys and rescuing and fostering as well. 
while the awareness increased, they got a huge success. The success is about a petition that was initiated by a volunteer at Our Haven Wildlife Shelter, signed by many to lower the speed limits in the area where kangaroos are mostly out during the nights, and especially the areas that are more prone to accidents. From dusk to dawn, you just need to slow down. There are quite a few bad areas around here. We're constantly rescuing along the Longford Lock Sport and Sea Spray Roads. Kangaroos have poor eyesight, so when headlights are on them, it just confuses them even more. They've got a small target to achieve for a genuine cause that we're about to tell you. Though the couple has transformed their home for these wild beings, and has recently constructed a separate room for these babies in their garden, that's not enough. Our dream would be to have land out of town, away from main roads, so we could release our orphans safely. At the moment, we have to sedate them when they're 18 months of age and transport them, which is a three-hour drive to a large shelter where they're soft-released, which is very stressful on the orphans and ourselves explained the kind-hearted couple on their website. They started receiving animal charities in Australia, and later on, from many parts of the world. 